Yeah, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. We're now going to be shifting our conversation to the uh, Maradi rail line, and we have Sukonte Davids, the former director, Marine Operations, NPA, that's Nigeria Post Authority. Good morning, and thanks for joining us. Good morning. Yes, talking about this very important uh, Kano Maradi Railway, uh, let's talk about how it's going to boost trade and activity between Nigeria and Niger. Well, essentially, you, you know that the uh, Niger Republic is a landlocked nation and is um, closest to Nigeria than any other country. Incidentally, it does most of its um, export and import businesses through other ports in West Africa. So is, we are losing a lot of um, businesses by virtue of that. And the major reason the Nigeria Republic government prefers other ports to our ports is because of the um, now infamous numerous road checks, roadblocks, and you know the condition of our roads are not too good. So essentially, it costs so much for them to do business transactions between other countries and their country through Nigeria. So what this rail line essentially is going to do is to now open up that business corridor to Nigerian business people. And it, it Essential, of course, is also going to create more job opportunities. Kano has a lot of, there's some form of international market where everybody comes in with a product. And so when that rail line passes through Kano to Maradi, and of course, you know, the other rail lines that are also connected to Kano, it opens up the, the hinterland, the northern hinterland of the, of the country to more uh, businesses. So I think that it's a well thought out um, project and I think that it is good for our own national economy. Uh, if, if we are going to rate it with regards uh, spending and priorities at a time like this, um, also considering the fact that we have a lot of uh, deficit with regards, uh, you know, uh, rail lines in the country and uh, our economy um, uh, needs, you know, some help, um, would you say that it should have been top of our priorities building a rail line between Nigeria and Niger? Like here, you have mentioned that we have rail line deficit. In fact, if you go through development all over the world, economies are developed through rail lines. Why this is so is that the rail lines have the capacity to carry goods and services, which um, uh, most roads cannot. Part of the reasons, part of the, one of the reasons why our roads are expressing the um, quick wear and tear is because of the the, the volume of um, cargo Vehicular that traffic. passes through our, our roads is so heavy that the roads cannot be able to, they are not sustainable. They cannot, they are not built to carry that um, uh, um, uh, um, uh, um, weight. So, uh, to carry heavy duty materials, heavy duty developmental projects and um, equipment. So, it is already too late. I think that if we are well meaning, we should commend the government of President Buhari for taking these decisions. Because if we, we, we continue to postpone the development of our rail lines, we are invariably postponing our own development. So that is what you have to understand. We are postponing our development because we cannot really have meaningful development everywhere in the country carrying goods and services of heavy weights across the country through our roads. Our roads are going to break down and it is very expensive to construct and maintain those roads. And they are not, they are not able to service and provide the services they are supposed to do. So you must make sacrifices. At every given point in time, you must make sacrifices. Life is about choices. It's also about sacrifices. Those are my priorities. Okay, so, so this is yeah, what I wanted you to quickly speak on. You know, the same question, but the, the direction is, 
if, if you were looking at what, you know, it, it is going to cost us, you know, we've, of course, had to take a loan for this uh, project. Um, and I'm, I'm talking priorities now as a country. Um, do you, would you say that, yes, you know, it, it, it's a good project, it's a great direction that we're going, um, and it's not such a bad idea taking a loan in order to, you know, set up that rail line between Nigeria and Niger? Um, and of course, um, or maybe do you think that we should have invested those funds elsewhere? Where else? Every, at every point in time, a nation must take a decision. And that decision must not be comfortable to everybody. But it's an issue of priority. Do we want to develop or do we want to develop? Do we want to develop? What are the things we need to be in place for us to develop? One of such things is railway lines. So it's essential that we develop those railway lines. Because if we don't develop those railway lines, we can't develop. We cannot develop. Look at even the great law in Ipapa, in Lagos. It's because we don't have effective railway lines. Okay, we are. We seem to be struggling a little bit with um, the connection with um, Sir so Conte Davis there. So we hope that we can reconnect with him and uh, get back to this uh, conversation. We're eventually going to extend the conversation to talking about other uh, transnational um, rail lines, you know, that are possible and how we can also create better investments, you know, that would suit the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement, um, and, or area rather, um, how that also would boost our economies, um, how much we truly will benefit, you know, between business, um, you know, in business with between uh, Kano and Niger. Yes. Um, what exactly is the, you know, the level of trade that goes on between these two countries or that is possible between these two countries? Yes, I really can't wait for us to have uh, Mr. Davis back on because if the government is approving the sum of $2 billion for this, we need to have a sense of idea of just how much value we're getting back in return. Do we have you back now, Mr. Davis? Yes, I'm, I can hear you, but you're oh, breaking. Okay. I don't know if you're hearing me very well, but yeah. Okay, I can hear you perfectly well. So I was just saying, uh, talking about how much money has been invested into this project, $2 billion at the moment, I want you to give us a clearer picture of the kind of value, you know, that we should be expecting, that Nigeria should be expecting to get out of this Kano Maradi rail line. The value we are going to get, immediately we cannot monetarily quantify them immediately. But we have to understand that one is going to open up our businesses to other businesses, especially from the Nigerian Republic. So, and it's also going to create more jobs. So it's an issue of multiplier effects. And you also have to understand that this real connection, Kano itself is connected to so many places. So this real connection is going to open other businesses that need to use that line. So essentially, even this kind of Maradi rail line is not enough. And indeed, we should even be thinking of other rail lines, like from Cross River to Cameroon, like from uh, uh, Lagos to Benin, and things like that. Medukiri to maybe somewhere like Cape Republic. We have a deficit. So the, the, the essential thing is that when this rail line is effectively developed, it is going to open up our businesses for more interaction, for both local and international participation. And do not forget that part of the, 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 the contract is for them to develop 300, a lot of member years, so various of the 300 is one that sticks to my mind and mostly. If we develop 300 specialists, for our real economy, for our needs, that itself is a lot. It's not enough for a country as large as Nigeria. There is a way to go and do the build investment. It has multiplied effect, it has multiplied benefit in our economy. Because not only that businesses will develop, but also that our manpower, our real technology manpower is also going to be increased. So it is a welcome development team. Okay. You, you just mentioned uh, earlier that even the Kano Maradi rail line is not enough and that we need more, you know, rail lines across, you know, connecting Nigeria to the rest of Africa. And we know that uh, we've signed the Africa Continental Free Trade Area Agreement, you know, along with 43 other African countries in the AU. And we know what this stands for, saying, you know, tariffs, tariffs should be removed, you know, when it comes to trade, you know, within the African continent. So do you think 
think you know this would would serve as a push or as a boost to that uh, agreement and how more can nigeria contribute to ensuring that trade or intra-african trade is enhanced you know that we, it took us time to sign that treaty because our businesses our businessmen and women raised concern that in certain areas we are not developed our systems such a way that will benefit from it. Our institutions are not developed to get, are not uh, effective, not that they are not effective in their present operations. And some of our systems, including transportation, such that will end up becoming a dumping ground because we have a large market. Nigerian market is huge, 200 plus million people. It's a huge market. So these are the fears that are expressed by our business and there are genuine fears. But now that we are started going into this transnational railway lines, transnational transport systems that will open up other markets to our own markets. We will not enhance the participation of our businesses in other countries. That is why this railway line development, not only, like I said, not only on the Maradi, Emu Maradi um, to the Niger Republic line, but we should also think of developing other lines because that is going to give our businesses a great uh, advantage because when we have the market that people want to dump uh, uh, their products, we also if we have the infrastructure and the facilities to export our um, product through these uh, connections, it's going to open up the markets for us. So it's going to increase capacity within our, our manufacturing, our business environment, which in a, we go to also creating more jobs for our, our people. And that is what every government wants. Because the more jobs that are created, the more people that are engaged, the economy becomes, begins to boom. Because more taxes will be paid and there will be more um, income to be dispensed with. So I believe, strongly believe, that, that the development of this railway line will enhance our activities. It will, it will boost the, the, the businessmen and women from Nigeria to go into countries like uh, Niger. We, we can't underrate any country. I believe that we have more to give to Niger and Niger has to give to us. And if there are no easy means of communication, real communication, real transportation is part of communication, then we, we uh, hamstring our businesses. So these are one of the things that we have there, I believe. Yeah, but, but I'm going to go back to, um, yes, I, I know you've said it, you know, more than once, I guess, you know, that uh, we shouldn't knock off, you know, any of, you know, the government's ideas and, you know, the, the, the plans, you know, uh, with this Niger rail line, you know, but I'm going to once again ask about, you know, how we could have maybe better prioritized our investments. We have um, a larger uh, trade between um, Ivory Coast, uh, Ghana and Cameroon, like you've mentioned. Um, so should we maybe have been thinking of setting up those ones first, where we make a lot more money from? Uh, than Niger? Good question. First, you have to know that Ivory Coast by itself has ports, so it's a competitor to Nigeria. The ports in Ivory Coast are competitors. Niger has no ports and uses other ports. So the, uh, the, 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 the idea, I believe, is first of all, capture those who are in competition with us in the usage of city ports. I believe so. But you know, I've also said that in order to expand our businesses and expand the participation of our business people, not only this Nigerian line we need to develop, we also need to develop the um, Maduguri, the German uh, uh, rail line. We need to develop that one. Chad is also landlocked. We need to develop even the one with Benin Republic, though they also have us. But there's a lot of traffic from there. So I agree with you. But the priority which you have put is correct. You do not want to develop first people who have competition with you before you go and develop those you have advantage over. Presently, speaking from the point point of view, and I must tell you that a lot of businesses, a lot of landlocked countries in West Africa and Africa prefer other ports than our own ports because of the challenges we have mentioned here of multiple roadblocks and then um, bad roads and everything. And the bad roads are essentially not only because they're not within our roads, but roads are not built to carry the type of cargo they're carrying, the, kind of, um, the, the, the type of weight they're carrying. They're not what roads are essentially built. Roads are built for light 
uh, haulage, light carriage, people, and small, small things, not for huge equipment. Yeah, that is what we have used our roads for. So the roads are not in good condition. Most of them are not in good condition. The government is trying to fix them good enough. But now, focusing on developmental project and railway. Railway is not only to move people, it's also to move cargo. And not just to move every cargo, it's also right. to move heavy cargo. That's what rail lines line, line are essentially made for. And now, where they pass through, they also help to evaporate agricultural products. But most of them pass through such places that you Indeed, Mr. Want Davids. Mr. So Davids. Mm -hmm. like that, so, you, you've, you've explained it yeah, so quite. What I'm saying is that, You've explained it quite extensively. There's so much benefit to, you know, expanding Nigeria's railway networks, especially, you know, to other African countries. We thank you very much for your time. Thanks for joining us on The Breakfast this morning. Thank you very much. Um, you know, I, I, I read, you know, sometime yesterday about the benefits or the trade benefits, um, um, or trade figures, really, rather, between Nigeria and Ghana and, you know, Ivory Coast and Cameroon and some other places. Um, and how, of course, we are also struggling with the Lagos Badagri, you know, Expressway, we're struggling with so much, really. And how, um, of course, there is already that narrative that this $2 billion um, investment really is more political than economical. Um, and when you look at those factors here and there, you, you can't really, you know, um, stop a person from having that, you know, perspective, that narrative. Um, we need to always be able to justify why we are spending money in Nigeria. Um, we're currently in trillions of naira um, in debt, um, billions of dollars in debt in, in a five-year period. And so how does the government continue to justify that amount of borrowing um, and convince Nigerians that it will be beneficial in the next five, ten years? Mm. Well, the government, especially the presidency and the Minister of Transportation, have been, you know, hammering this out in the news and the media, you know, about the benefits of this kind of Maradi rail line. About The president said about 80 million people benefit from it. You know, how many tons oh, wow. of goods will be, you know, cargoed across. But let's just uh, watch and see. Hopefully, maybe this would be oh, a very good one for, you know, economy in Nigeria. Hopefully. So that's, uh, that's the much we can give this morning. Thank you very much for being a part of our conversation right from, you know, the NSAS, uh, the protest, and then to the International Day. Uh, if you missed that earlier, today is the International Day of Women and Girls in STEM. So support, support, support girls, support girls to venture into, you know, the STEM fields. And of course, talking about the economy between Nigeria and Niger using the rail lines. Yes. So thank you very much once again for watching. My name is Aneta Felix. And of and, course, uh, uh, Osao Gyogbo. Remember, you know, I always say that if you miss out on any of these conversations or you join us late, you can catch up on social media. It's simply at Plus TV Africa on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Same with our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. Bye for now and see you tomorrow. Yes.